right, folks, Rich here at RCM4.com. Thanks for stopping by and checking out this uh, short video on the uh, Sky Surfer version 5 from Banana Hobby. Uh, if you hadn't seen the uh, full flight demo, uh, check it out at the end. Uh, I'll put a link there where you can uh, go to that. Uh, this is just going to be a real quick video, guys, just to give you a couple of uh, building tips to get this airplane together. The plane goes together very simply, guys. There's just two spars that uh, run between the wings, uh, two screws that actually go up through the bottom, and then two screws that go up through the tail. Uh, to get the uh, horizontal stabilizer on. Um, I ran into a little snag getting my two uh, wing spars in, but there's a real simple way to put them in that I'm going to show you how to do uh, that might help you uh, get them in there a little bit easier. Uh, also, um, uh, the plane doesn't really need flaps at all. It flies great without them, but I put them on mine uh, just for the heck of it, just to try it. So I'm going to show you how to install those in there. And in the flight video, it shows, you, it shows uh, uh, the plane flying with flaps also. Um, and then also a couple suggestions for the propeller, uh, a couple options for the propeller, and some ways of making it uh, a little more secure for you. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, let's get on with uh, the tips for the Sky Surfer version 5. The Sky Surfer version 5 goes together real easily, guys. A couple notes I want to make, especially regarding uh, the, the wing, uh, wing and wing spars on these things. Uh, I measured the center point, and then I put a little rubber O-ring here right in the middle of both because uh, there's nothing to stop these things from going too far or not going far enough or sliding around in there. So uh, this is not something in the instructions, but uh, what I did is I put, as you can see, a little O-ring here, put a drop of CA and some accelerator. So now I know where the center point of the uh, spar is, and you don't have to worry about it sliding around in there. The other thing I noticed is uh, that the spar pocket uh, for the larger spar, uh, you can see it runs right around from here all the way down to here. And somewhere in the middle, as I looked down the hole in it, it looked like in the middle of the spar there was like a break in the tube. And, and I couldn't get one end, to feed, or both ends actually really, to feed down in. So what I did was, is I put sort of like a pencil point on here. I uh, put this, uh, and it's a solid carbon spar, which is kind of unusual, usually it's a tube. But you can see I put a pencil point uh, end on it, just using my, uh, my belt sander. And uh, what that allowed for me to do is to go ahead and plug in the uh, main spar in here. And then even if there's an area here where, again, I think there was like one spar pocket here and then another spar pocket here, and the tubes came out of alignment in the center. But with the point on it, I was able to push this thing, uh, get it all the way in, and uh, you can see how that O-ring right there rests nicely on the uh, end of the tube there. So, and that'll make sure that you can guide uh, these things uh, all the way down into the spar pocket on both wings. Another improvement that I made regarding my wings are uh, the addition of flaps. And you can see here, I went ahead and I installed a flap servo in here, and, uh, and uh, I ran a linkage and a horn. Now, for some reason with the kit, they did not include the horns and clevises. So I had some spares laying around. This one in particular was uh, uh, an FMS horn and linkage and rod that I had laying around, just spares. So, uh, and it fits perfectly right into these holes. So if you have a spare FMS horn or two spare FMS horns and some rods, you can, uh, you can uh, those will fit right in with screws and everything. So uh, also the um, uh, HT900 uh, or HXT900 servo, one of these Hobby King brands, uh, any 9 gram servo really will fit in here. And you can see here, I used some white electrical tape and just taped over it. All you really need to do is put a dab of uh, contact cement down on the floor or on the servo and then just push the servo right in and uh, that'll keep it uh, in place. And it's as simple as that. You can see here from the uh, other wing, uh, I haven't done this one yet, but it's really this easy. All you need to do is just kind of put your knife in and uh, just pull this plug out and uh, it is ready to install a servo right in here. And you can see uh, with my, uh, with my uh, HXT900 servo here, you can see it is a drop-in fit. And again, almost any nine, nine gram servo uh, will fit in there and you can route, uh, route the servo in uh, as you need to. And you know, depending on your radio that you have, you may want to mix this electronically because uh, uh, usually if you don't have any electronic mixing, you have to reverse one of these servos or have a reversed servo. Um, I used one of those little uh, servo reversers from Hobby King that also act as a slowdown mechanism as well to slow these down. But anyway, you can see how easy of a thing this is. Uh, I did remove the sticker from this side. I put a dab of contact cement on there 
And again, as you can see, it's really just a drop-in fit right there to add flaps to this airplane. Here's a quick look at both of my uh, flap servos installed, guys. You can see it's a real nice installation. I went ahead and put some uh, uh, white electrical tape uh, over the wiring here just to keep it in. Uh, also, you'll notice down here, um, if you don't use flaps on the airplane, which again, you really don't. The plane doesn't really need it. I just wanted to install it also so I can show you guys how to do this. Um, if you don't use flaps, uh, they come with these uh, little flap lock uh, units, which uh, really just fit right here in the wedge, and then they just sort of slide in there. And uh, using uh, this piece for the top plate, you put some screws in through the other side, and it basically just fixes uh, the flap in position, so, uh, so basically there's uh, no flap there. But uh, it's a real nice system, guys. Again, the flaps are not necessary, uh, but I figured I would just show you how to do this and show you how easy it is to get these things installed in here. One of the most important parts about uh, putting the Sky Surfer version 5 together is uh, actually taking a Dremel tool and actually filing a flat spot in the shaft of the motor uh, that will accept um, the uh, set screw that, uh, that joins it. If you don't do this, uh, the, the prop is actually going to probably spin on this thing and you need to have something with a bite. So uh, as I uh, zoom into this thing, you can see uh, what I did with mine, uh, with just a little bit of, uh, like I said, cutting with a Dremel tool, you put that little flat spot on there, and uh, again, that's going to allow the set screw uh, something to, uh, to actually bite into. Now that there's a flat spot filed in the uh, motor shaft, as long as you have uh, this scr set screw tightened down on that flat spot, you don't have to worry about the prop slipping on the shaft anymore. Now, a couple other things to note uh, about this propeller. I've been flying this thing for uh, several months now. Uh, and uh, I noticed that uh, uh, the, uh, the pins that come with this thing, and you see there's a pin right here, and there's a pin right here, and that allows the, uh, the, uh, the prop to uh, fold when you uh, turn the motor off. I noticed the ones that uh, come with it uh, are a little bit short, and you can see right here how this one is sort of recessed in here, uh, and this one actually kind of sticks out. And uh, what happens is, is uh, this uh, prop hub, when it's screwed on here, or the uh, prop spinner here, uh, this is what retains and keeps those pins in there from flying out. Now, the one on this side is the one that was included with the airplane. The one on this side is one that I made. Now, I made this out of a, out of a two millimeter um, thick push rod, and I just cut it a little bit longer. Uh, the one here was about six and a half millimeters um, uh, across, and you see it's not quite uh, long enough to kind of protrude out that, uh, that plastic a little bit, whereas the one that I cut here, is actually about you know seven seven and a half eight millimeters long and it actually sticks out a little bit of both sides and really makes this thing uh, much more secure now one thing to note uh, as uh, I was flying this thing um, I had really no problems with this propeller at all until I decided to put a camera on the airplane and in the video that you saw the trailer to this video I had a camera mounted on the front and it was pointing back. Well, the problem is, is that increases the load on this prop and also creates such a disturbed airflow over this propeller that uh, these little plastic areas right here and right here are very weak. And with that disturbed airflow over it, I found that this propeller came apart on me uh, once or twice. Uh, and when it comes apart, it sort of uh, can damage the foam down here. And what I did is I put some... Um, uh, some um, uh, white duct tape uh, over this thing to sort of protect this in case the propeller comes apart again. So as long as you're flying this airplane with no camera on it, this prop uh, gets the job done. Now one suggestion I have as a replacement or if you're going to put uh, a camera on this airplane is to just get yourself a, uh, an APC prop to put on this thing. Now this is an APC um, 5.25 by 6.25 pitch and it's a perfect fit uh, for the shaft here that comes with this. Uh, the only thing that I did to this thing, uh, as you can see here, is I put a double-sided sandpaper washer. This is just a piece of sandpaper that I glued uh, the back sides together, and uh, it's basically gritty on both sides, and that allows uh, the prop and nut and washer and everything to go on here, and uh, now it'll bite in there. So you can really just mount this thing uh, right on here the way you see it, and run this airplane with a, with a, with a non-folding propeller, and uh, that's a great substitute uh, for the folding prop. And again, you would want to use this uh, for two reasons. One, as a replacement uh, for the folding propeller, 
And uh, two, if you're running a camera up front, uh, this disturbed air over this propeller won't harm this propeller at all. So it's definitely um, a really uh, a great way to go as a substitute prop for this airplane. All right, folks, that pretty much concludes this video on the Sky Surfer version 5 uh, from Banana Hobby. Uh, the build tips that you saw here, guys, uh, are all the things I did to my plane, and they seem to work really well on it. Uh, one more note I want to make on uh, inserting the wing spars. Um, uh, you know, just try inserting your wing spars uh, as they come out of the box. Uh, and then if you have problems with it, um, you know, use that pencil point uh, uh, type uh, technique that I used. Uh, that seemed to work real well for me, but that could have been something that was just kind of unique to my airplane. I had a hard time getting them in. But if you guys have, uh, don't have any problem getting them in there, just put them in as is and go. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, check out the uh, full flight demo again. Uh, I'll put a link at the end of this video. Uh, thanks for uh, watching RC Informer, and we'll see you next time.